Um, hey, sideways. It's Super Kami sideways to you, fire. Okay, fine, Mr. Super Kami sideways, sir. I think you're taking this whole fame thing a little too far. I mean, y you build a band, you have dogs doing your bidding, you have money, you, um, what else did he do? I started the Sons of Unicron. And then the last night, I will become the ruler of the new world. I will make videos with my left hand and then gain money with me right. I will take a potato chip and, and eat it. Yes, you definitely took this from that though. Well be gone, Megatron kicked him out of my temple into the trash. This isn't over sideways, you traitor. Well that went well. So, uh, what should we do? But he stole everything Lolo. Not enough minerals. We could do another wasted potential to get some more advertising revenue. Uh, I don't wanna do a wasted potential video. The last one I did barely got 5,000 views. And the last one before that did meh. Please just do it. Yeah, you know what, I'll take my chance. But we gotta do this differently. I, I got it. Hello guys, welcome to Wasted Potential Season 2. Yes, this is basically Season 2. So in this series, the Season 2 series, I'm gonna go over some of the Wasted Potentials. I did not cover the first season, so I won't repeat certain ones like Shockwave, RC, and stuff like that. Just so we're clear. So today we're covering Eberron's favorite Einstein looking Autobot, who seems to speak in a half Scottish, half Irish model, and English. Anything except German. Which, you know, it's kind of ironic because he's based off Albert Einstein and he's German. But, uh, you know, it's not the worst of Michael Bay's crimes against Transformers. So, uh, it's really high up there, though. Alright, so let's begin. And like always, we're going to start with the movies. So in Dark of the Moon, our first appearance of him, he was part of a strike team consisting of Bumblebee, Dino, and Sideswipe. He was posing as the defense min minister's vehicle to cross a checkpoint. And once they passed the checkpoint, he and the other Autobots destroyed the illegal nuclear facility. Even though we never saw him do it, but uh, we were left to assume that he took part of it. Much later, at NES headquarters in Washington, D.C., Q provided Ironhide some new upgraded weapons and as two powerful assault rifles that Ironhide was so impatient to try it out on some Decepticons. But then the National Intelligence Director Charlotte Muring arrived at the base. He politely introduced himself to her, but she kind of ignored him. He also told us that Optimus was in a bad mood. Muring thought that this was just some kind of weird silent treatment. But Q, Ironhide, and the other Autobot story that no, this was much worse. Then, when Optimus Prime transformed and, and told everyone about the Ark, he stood in the sidelines just hearing the whole conversation between Optimus and the government officials. After the Autobots were exiled by Earth's government, he was seen with the other Autobots journey to the Sand Tomb. He was also briefly seen when Sam approached Optimus to try and get some information from him. He and the other Autobots later boarded the Santium and left Earth, but as soon as they were about to leave, Starscream destroyed the Santium, but the Autobots saw through this deception. I get it, Decepticons, deception, ha 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 ha, not funny. So the Autobots moved to one of the shuttles in the Santium. While the Santium was destroyed, one of the pieces fell off and landed safely in an unknown location. The Autobots then secretly prepared the counterattack against the Decepticons. The Autobots would later return at Chicago, which was at this time occupied by a Decepticon presence. After infiltrating Chicago, before the Autobots and humans went into battle, Q gave Sam with Wiki and the rest of the human forces a bunch of new anti-Decepticon weaponry, which he constructed. He told them that they were great weapons for kicking ass. Much later, at an unknown time, many Autobots were severely overwhelmed and captured. Q was one of these Autobots. At this point, the human known as Dylan the Hacker 
told Sanwei that they needed to learn some respect, and Sanwei agreed with him and decided to kill them and just take trophies from their remains. Q voiced his fears to Bumblebee that they were gonna kill them. It was at this moment when Barry kept pushing forward, telling him that his time was up. Wheeljack tried to beg for mercy. I know I'm switching between Q and Wheeljack, but they're basically the same character, so it doesn't matter. Wheeljack was begging for mercy, but he was shot in the chest by a random Decepticon portal form dick. We're gonna we're just gonna call it we're just, we're just gonna call this portal form dick. Dick Grayson. There, PG. He then fell to his knees in severe pain, asking him why they were doing this. But then Barry could shot him from the back, killing him. His body fell to the ground and his deactivated head rolled away from his broken body. Not only that, but he also made everyone in the theater cry. I know I cried. His death affected Bumblebee and he was mourning his friend, but then Barry Kid ended insult to injury by laughing at the fallen Autobot. Sunway then pushed Bumblebee onto Cusa's death body to torment him some more before his execution. At least Bowie managed to avenge Wheeljack once Wheelie and Brain sabotage a Decepticon ship, causing a distraction for Bumblebee to be able to get the upper hand on the Decepticons. Even though he was dead, Wheeljack later helped the humans. You wanna know how? Well, remember those boomsticks that he gave the humans? Ironically, after Barry Gate was blaming the other platforms for letting Soundway die, a bunch of humans used Wheeljack's boomsticks and they sticked up to Barry Gate's legs, making them explode, causing him severe pain. I guess you could say that at the end, Wheeljack got the last laugh. Now we move on to Age of Extinction. In Age of Extinction, we see that five years after the Battle of Chicago, Q was listed as deceased by the CIA task force known as Cemetery Win. That's it, he didn't really do much in Age of Extinction because he was, you know, dead. Also, I want to add something. In the last night in Age of Extinction, we see the humans using the almost exact same boomsticks that we saw them use in Dark of the Moon. So, in a way, Wheeljack helped the humans, you know, fight the Decepticons in Dark of the Moon, but in Age of Extinction on the last night, he kind of gave them more weapons to kill his fellow Allabouts with. Now, that's really disturbing in my opinion. Weapons that were meant to protect the humans and their fellow Autobots that are now being used against his own friends. That's kinda messed up. But that's it for the movie guys. Now we're gonna go over the comics. A thousand years ago, before he called himself Q, Wheeljack was at the service of Sentinel Prime. They were fighting on a dying Cybertron trying to unite the different Cybertronian tribes. By this point, Cybertron didn't have a son and he was basically dying out of energy. But Wheeljack and the Sentinel Prime forces managed to build a device that once linked to the old spark, teleported Cybertron to a nearby sun, essentially revitalizing the planet and giving them energy once again. Very soon after revitalizing the planet, Wheeljack stood next to Sentinel Prime on Unification Day, when Sentinel Prime was announcing that it was a new age and that they should all work together. Cybertron was going to be governed by Optimus Prime, who led the Science Division, and Megatron, who commanded the Defense Force. Naturally, Wheeljack chose to join Optimus, because, I mean, he's a scientist. Y y you cannot stay away from that. Many years later, Wheeljack, Elite One, and Optimus were in a excavation site with other Autobots, but they were soon attacked by, Op by Megatron's forces, who at this point they had already declared themselves the Decepticons and they were already starting to revolve against the Autobots. Optimus, at this point named Optimus Prime, rallied the Autobots against the Decepticon forces, and this included Wheeljack. This then led to the war that we all know, the Decepticons versus the Autobots. At this point, the wars was getting worse and worse. Sentinel Prime created his secret weapon that could end the war, according to him. So Sentinel Prime was planning to leave Cybertron to another place so he can enact his plan of revitalizing Cybertron as the, wars was as the war was getting worse. But it was at this moment that the arc that Sentinel Prime was traveling in was destroyed by Starscream. Optimus Prime was angry and Megatron for the death of his master. And Megatron was angry because, because Starscream basically just ruined his plan. By this point, Megatron and Sentinel Prime were already working together. They were planning to go to Earth, use the space bridge to teleport Earth to Cybertron and use its resources to rebuild everything that the war had destroyed. After this, Wheeljack decided to steal the old spark to make sure that the Decepticons would not get it. He unplugged the old spark from his machine, but by doing so, 
the son that was teleported to Cybertron was destroyed. So Cybertron was left dark once again and all the progress that they had built for all these years was just gone. Years later, at some point in 2009 alongside Mirage, Wheeljack arrived in Washington DC. The pair joined a nest force and were, and were stationed in Washington DC. This will later be turning to the Autobots main headquarters, but by this point it was just a stationary point. At some point the Decepticons were attacking Philadelphia. One movie was alone fighting all the Decepticons. When news of this broke out, both Wheeljack and Dino jumped into action and helped one movie fight all the Decepticons that were invading the city. They managed to hold the line until Optimus Prime arrived with reinforcements. <laughs> Once reinforcements arrived, the Decepticons were starting to flee. Prime told Wheeljack to create a force field to keep all the Decepticons from escaping. Wheeljack was in the process of creating a force field to keep everyone from escaping, but then Shockwave descended from the heavens on the battlefield and he shot at Wheeljack with a powerful blast, severely injuring him. Wheeljack was left on the ground, but he was luckily was still barely functional, that he was able to recalibrate and trap Shockwave in an energy force field. By this point, Shockwave had killed Elita One, and Optimus Prime was furious. Shockwave had nowhere to go, and Optimus Prime just massacred Shockwave, leaving him really injured, until from the ground the driller came, bypassing the force field, and scoring Shockwave to safety. After the battle, Ratchet examined Wheeljack and Dino's broken bodies. They were all, the two of them were so damaged that Ratchet was unsure if they would end up looking the same. They were gonna live, but they probably won't look the same. Which this leads onto the movie, where we see Wheeljack looking very different from his comic counterpart and Dino looking very different from his comic counterpart as well. So uh, yeah, that's it for Wheeljack guys. Now he didn't really do much in the film. The only thing that he did of value would be, you know, um, giving the humans the anti-Decepticon weaponry, which they will air use to take down several Decepticons to ambush them, and for and you know the boomstick that Samuel Wiki later used to um, kill Starscream with. So in a way, you could say that Wheeljack indirectly killed a bunch of Decepticons. He was really smart, he came up with these weapons, but the problem is that I kinda expected more for him. I mean, he's this like mad scientist, supposedly. He, you know, got Ironhide those two giant weapons, he supposedly takes care of the Autobots weaponry, he's like the scientist of the group. I don't know guys, I kinda expected more from him because, I mean, G1 Wheeljack was amazing, he was the, kinda the same. He even built the Dinobots, G1 Wheeljack built the Dinobots. Other incarnations of Wheeljack happen to be a little more cool than that, like in Transformers Prime which is oh my god my favorite version of Wheeljack, like I, I like Wheeljack Prime, like oh my god he's so amazing. I mean yeah he even gets play of the game every now and then. Play of the game. Records don't call for backup. So in other incarnations we see Wheeljack prove himself that he's the smartest by you know creating stuff, like doing cool stuff, but in Dark of the Moon all we have is the Einstein head and you know, that doesn't really prove anything. Just because you had the Einstein head doesn't mean you're smart, like, you could prove yourself being smart. He built some Decepticon weaponry and um, supposedly, you know, Ironhide's guns and that's it. He didn't do anything else in that. And then he got killed out of nowhere. Now, I'm not gonna lie, his death was actually pretty sad because unlike Ironhide, unlike Jazz, he wasn't a warrior, he was a scientist. And in his back, we can see that he you know, comes equipped with some guns, so in a way he is a fighter, but still, he looked up, he was actually pretty old, and you know, him begging for mercy was actually quite sad, which is something we have never seen before, and now about two especially, beg for mercy. It kind of made his death a little more sadder than that. But not that I talked about what was wrong with him in the movie, now nah, I'm gonna talk about how would I have handled him. Okay, so this is a tough one, so at the beginning of the film, at the beginning of the film, I think it would have been best if maybe we could have gotten like a small scene of the Autobots, like all three of them, Bumblebee, Sideswap, and Wheeljack, you know, destroying the illegal nuclear facility instead of just seeing some random explosions. Like, I would like to have seen in a, se a scene like in the last night where we saw Hard Rod and Bumblebee. It was short, but it was still pretty good. 
I, will, I wouldn't have mind seeing a small scene like that of the three of us just engaging. Like, give Will Jack some a little bit more action. Then in Washington DC, I will keep the scene where he's just, you know, uh, hanging around the Autobot base. I will just keep that the same because I think that's a perfect, you know, showcase of him being the um, the scientist of the group, like the tech, the you know, technology guy. Now, when the Autobots are ordered to be exiled, how Will Jack just um. I don't know, like, fix some stuff around the ship, or having just tinker around or something, instead of having the records, you know, do the, do the thing. I think that will be way more useful, it will just tell us, you know, ahead before he gives the humans their anti decepticon weapon that he's the smart, the brains of the group. Now, for the Battle of Chicago, how will Jack and Dealer all about it? have, like, a small fight against the Decepticons? You know that scene where the Autobots are basically covering the humans so they can escape? Have Wheeljack be there and have him like shut down some Decepticons just to you know showcase that he's also a warrior, not just a scientist. Because listen, rule number one of of war, the front lines is not a place for a scientist. As far as we know, in the movie he's portrayed as a scientist, he's not a fighter. So having just have you know give us a reason to justify why he's there. Have him like fight some Decepticons. That makes it justify him being there. Now, the reason why I wouldn't replace Wheeljack with Dino in terms of the death scene, having Dino get killed, I mean, that would be. I think that would, you know, give us an equal amount of, um, of feels, because both characters are pretty much new and we don't really know a lot about them. But with Dino, I don't think he will beg for mercy, he will, you know, go quietly. I think he will kill some Decepticons before, um, with his blades before getting killed by Barry K. If Wheeljack survives, then he will most likely escape and participate in the final battle. Now, I think Wheeljack in the final battle will be way more interesting than Dino. Because if Wheeljack was in the final battle, he he has a lot of weapons and still he he's still he's still hiding some weapons in his back and you know for the humans. So maybe he can supply the humans with weapons to use during the battle. And we can see the humans basically are turning the tile of the battle. And Wheeljack using some of his uh weird weaponry. He also has a chainsaw, so maybe seeing you know Q operate on some Decepticon platforms, like that would be pretty good and having survived Dark of the Moon, only for him to go missing in Age of Extinction. And after that, I don't know what we should do with him because, you know, Wheeljack, Roadbuster, and um, Ratchet are the only returning Autobots from, uh, from Dark of the Moon. So, uh, yeah, I don't know what will happen to him, but um, that's where I'm going to leave his, his movie appearances. But yeah, that's where I will end, you know, Wheeljack's screen time, having been in the final battle. Having like participate and you know showcase some of his weird weaponry, and then having happen be present when Megatron gets killed and not the all of us are just staring at staring at the sky triumphantly. That's what I would have done with Wheeljack. Sorry, Dino fans. I just think Wheeljack is way more interesting than Dino. All right, guys. So now we're jumping to the wasted potential scale. Now, in terms of the wasted potential scale, I'm really unsure where I will put Wheeljack. I mean, Wheeljack did fulfill his role. He was the scientist guy, that he gave the human weapons, he got the last laugh. He wasn't really meant to be a fighter, so... I am really unsure as to where should I put him. Okay, so in terms of the wasted potential scale, I would put Wheeljack at number 9. You know, above Infernicus and Jazz because they both fulfill their potentials, they both serve their purpose. Jazz sacrificed himself like a true all by protecting humans, and Infernicus was just supposed to be like the menacing figure, like the menacing uh, servant of the powerful master. He wasn't supposed to be really important. But as for Dino, I do feel like we could have seen a bit more of Dino. So that's why I'm putting Wheeljack below Dino. Since Dino was a fighter and he was actually kind of cool, he was unique, he didn't use a gun, he has his blades. So that's why I do feel we could have seen more of Dino. But Wheeljack kind of did fulfill his purpose in a way. Mirage kind of had no purpose in the movie. So just for the smallest of margins, I'm gonna put Wheeljack below Dino. But that's just my opinion guys. We can still see that RC is number 1, Shockwave is number 2, Devastator is number 3, the Twins are number 4, the last 9 Decepticons are number 5, Jolt at 6, the Dreads at 7, the Dino at 8, 9 we got Wheeljack, 10 we got Infernicus, and 11 Jazz. So what are your thoughts on the Wasted Potential scale so far? And who do you want to see next? 
for the next episode, I want to do something different, so uh, give me your comments as to who you want to see for episode 12. For episode 11, I'm going to do something differently. I'm not going to talk about uh, all about the Decepticon, I'm going to talk about something a bit more different, like a concept, so stay tuned for that. Hopefully you guys like it. If not, then I'm going to drop the idea entirely. But anyways guys, like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next video. Stay fire, brothers.